<laughs> All right, welcome to Living for the People. This is L. Nathan here. Welcome to our broadcast, focused on providing you insight into events shaping our national and regional world and the facts behind those events and policies that are shaping our world for today and for tomorrow. Join us weekly on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. following Amy Goodman's Democracy Now! program. And, of course, our program is live, so you can call and you can join our discussion. We really hope that you will. A lot of stuff is happening that we really want to hear your thoughts about. Uh, you can call us at 716-878-5104. That's 716-878-5104. We're in studio with our in-studio audience of one, Norm MacArthur. How are you doing out there, Norm? Pretty good, Mr. Hare, and good morning, sir. Norm had to get people out of the way so I can get into the studio about a minute late, you know. Clearing them out. Clearing clear, them, clear them out. Get get out the way. And then Willie put on that music. I'm that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had to I had a, a major emergency. I had to make a, a quick yeah, deposit. Boy, those those emergencies are something else. Uh, especially on radio. <laughs> the worst thing you can have is an emergency. Well, when well you're normally on radio. normally what I would do is get you on and run. Run I know, but I you get, couldn't grab me. So, uh, yeah, so you I, were Stuck. I was stuck, but you stuck. found a rope, you know, and you were able to <laughs> able to cling on to it until hey. until rescue came. <laughs> yes, I want to say a happy birthday to my daughter Cheyenne. We had a birthday party. Yeah, happy um, birthday, Cheyenne! Yeah, and everybody. And um, I think um, Khaki's in town, so oh, hopefully excellent. Khaki um, hear this broadcast, call in or something. At least call in. Um, she might even. Even be able, well, she won't be here that long, so I won't say she won't. That's all right. Just yeah. to hear her voice would be great. Yeah. So we have a lot on the plate. Hey, today. hey, hey, Mr. Hare, before you start, too, uh -huh. let me just say this. Man, I've been talking to people in the community, and it don't look good, especially with our young community. And we already know that 50% of whites going for Trump. But <laughs> our young people in our community. If not more. Right, if not more. Mm -hmm. But the young people in our community, for whatever reason, they're feeling Trump. Because Trump seems like he's a bad guy. You know, ah, he boxes his shoulders it. up. That he might scowls. Be you know, he, he swears. He right. talks smack. He threatens and, people. And I think they could identify with that. So, and then they go, oh, yeah, during the, the COVID, we made a lot of money, which in our communities and communities that we they was people who had no cars had two cars so they bring that up and then they bring something up trump got some young black people out of jail i, I don't know anything about that well yeah trump went on a little uh, 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 a campaign for about a month you know where he was in criminal justice and whatnot right? wow he was just doing that for him to to to, to signal to particular communities well it worked. I'm, in, I'm in your corner it worked but you know he did that most of those people that were targeted to be released never got released. Oh, okay. So it's the just... Pro, the program that he initiated... He just put it out there. That program ended, okay, because it was just an wow. executive order that lasted wow. for about a week, you know, but, but that's how we are. See, the, the problem is we don't read, we yeah. don't study, we yeah. don't research, we don't follow up on right. stuff. Right. We don't ensure that people who make promises actually keep the promises. Right. And so... It's it's like a veneer that people put a coating of, you know, here's the good things I'm going to do for you. Right. But when you check them out, they were stabbing you in the back. Right. Do you remember how they've been telling us uh, 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 for the last year and a half, well, you know, inflation is the problem. And the reason why we got so much inflation is because some of these people got jobs. Think about that for a second. Mm. Just think about that. For a second. Somebody has planted in your mind the idea that. Too many people have jobs mm. to be good for the country, and so it results in inflation. Mm. You would rather see another 8 to 12 to 20 million people unemployed so that you can get bread for $2.19 rather mm. than bread at $2.76. And keep in mind, people working uh, lessens crime. So that that right there is 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 something that really should big be, point should be really looked at. Big point, yeah. big point. You know, this ought to be a when, when you all are just 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 been born a couple of days ago. But I've been <laughs> I've been on the planet for a really really <laughs> long time. Okay, and when I came on the planet, everybody worked. If you didn't have a job, you were working in the communities. You were raking up raking up uh, uh, leaves. You were putting stuff in boxes. You were cleaning oil off of people's, you know, garage floors. 
everybody worked and created some revenue stream to be able to support themselves. The yeah. idea that you could be born and not work was just outside the range of thought, you know, of, of American people. This idea that you can roll through life without working, that, that, that's, just, that's just nonsense, roll right? Roll through life. So now you've got a situation where you've enabled people to work. That 3.8% of the population who aren't working are people who either quit a job and are on their way to another job, or they're people who have something physically limiting their ability to be able to work the kind of jobs that are available for them. Obviously, if you're a person who can't see, you can't work a job that requires you to be able to see. Yeah. So that person will have limited uh, uh, opportunities that are available to them. But we are really at full employment. You know, uh, it, in, in the, the era of John, uh, uh, John F. Kennedy, they said that 4% unemployment was full employment in this country because mm -hmm. there needed to be a certain number of, or percentage of people that were not working because they became a balance in terms of the pricing of wage, wages in the job market. If 4% of the people are not working at all, it puts a little bit of uh, downward pressure on wages because you can always signal to an employee, well, listen, you know, I, I notice 4% 4, 4, 4 raise that I'm, I'm dropping on you is not what you really wanted. But if you can't roll with me, there's a dude out here who ain't making no money. I can hire him. You know what I mean? That threat, you know, was that. And of course, the job market doesn't work that linearly, you know, one to one. But the basic framework of that is what the unemployment rate does for, for the economy. The point I'm making is they've been selling us on the idea that inflation is the result of too many people working. And so we have to reduce or we have to increase uh, 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 interest rates to reduce the amount of borrowing that companies can do to be able to run their businesses. Now, most companies don't run their businesses out of their savings accounts. They run their businesses on checking accounts that have money in them that was loaned to those companies or to companies. They don't go into their savings accounts to get the money to be able to go into business. They borrow money to go into business to operate the business, to, to get the supplies and pay for staff, you know, and so on, you hire people. Before you make the sale, you've already hired people. So you need the loan to give you the float money that you need so that you can make your product, market your product, sell a product, cash in, you know, the checks, and get the money into the bank, and you use that money to pay the installment payments on your loans. But if you keep raising the interest rates, you limit how much money a company is willing to borrow. If you limit how much the company is willing to borrow, you're limiting how many people the company can in, uh, 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 employ or what kind of wages that company can afford to pay. That's the situation that we're in right now. We, the problem with, with, with our young people is they don't have enough depth of experience on the planet to understand the significance of what's being said to them. It doesn't have any context you know, for them. For you all, there's a context. You got right. kids and grandkids. Right. So there's a context for you. You remember when things were different than they are right now. Mm. There was a time when we had 10% unemployment in the last four years. We had 10% unemployment. Right. That wasn't a good time. We sat, sat here at this desk right. speaking into this microphone when we had 10% unemployment. Right. And people were crying and right. gnashing their teeth and so on. Right. I think with a lot of these young people, a lot of them are young entrepreneurs, even like rappers. You know, they're starting to make some money. They've seen a little money, and they're thinking, well, hold up. I made money while this guy was in um, office. And that's all they, that you, matters is money to them, you only know, money. You know what? They don't really even fully understand that— Many reforms and the different things that right. that they receiving today right. didn't even start with Trump. Right. It started right. with right. You know right. What they I mean? were they were either begun uh, in the uh, uh, Biden administration mm -hmm. or they were begun they were begun in the Obama administration. Yes, sir. The Trump administration has actually done everything they could to eviscerate all of those things created, to, to, to created kill those programs. Nothing, right? nothing at right. all. So I just wanted people to understand that that basic caveat. It, it gets into what this discussion is right now. There's a hustle, a scam mm -hmm. that's being run on the American public right now right. 
by the Republicans that the Democrats are the reason why Kevin McCarthy lost his job. Wow. It's, it's the Democrats' fault. Now, let's just rationalize that for a second. Wow. <laughs> In fact, let me, let me read this to you. I went to an article written. This was for the, um, uh, the New York Post, which is a very conservative. That's what they call by people that are rednecks. They call them conservatives and whatnot. It seemed radical to me, but, but not, they, they call them conservatives. Uh, the New York Post, they're asserting this, this mantra that with the removal of McCarthy, rogue Republicans just keep helping Democrats. I, I, I entitled this piece of the program Post McCarthy House Being Led by a Rogues Gallery. Mm. Because now you've got the house being run by James Comer, Marguerite Taylor Greene, mm. Matt Gates, mm. Lauren Bobbick. You know, I mean, you got eight or nine almost nuts people, people that probably should be, you know, at Forest Lawn, you know, getting getting help with white coats on, you know, and so on. Right. Uh, Go ahead. I, no, no, just a thought. It was kind of fun. I you remember the other day I called when I called you. Mm -hmm. I was I was a little worried because I, I'd seen this and I'm looking at kind of what's going on as I was mm -hmm. doing my little read. Mm -hmm. But um, right now at this point, man, ain't nothing changed, Mr. Aaron. I'm, I'm still in a, a point where I feel that we, we in a, are in a state where we really have to do something positive to kind of form some kind of interaction between the Democrats and the Republicans to try to, try to change things. Because with those people... So here's what really has to happen. See, see, th this is what people don't understand. When Barack Obama got up to bat and got in line to become a candidate to run for the presidency, mm -hmm. there were people in this country who just, they, they lost their gourds. Their stomachs came out of their, 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 their throats and, you know, they, they, they had excess discharge, you know, from other places in their body and whatnot. They just lost everything, Right. And the reason for that is they said, I told you, I told you, Margie, they're, they're coming. They're going to replace us. You know, they, they ran that little hustle about, you know, in Charlotte, the Jews shall not replace us. Mm. But they were, they were just hustling you. What they really meant is those dark skinned people wow. are trying to replace you. Mm. Wow. And if we and the proof is Barack Obama. Mm. Yeah. They not only replace. I mean, they they become president. They're ruling over us. <laughs> now they got vice presidents. They got the uh, uh, ambassador to the United Nations. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, they got all of these dark skinned people all over the place. Right. The very thing that we've been telling you about for the last 15, 20 right. years, it is now occurring. Yeah. They yeah. did. They did lose their mind when Barack Obama became president. That's why they call it civil war. Yeah. You know, why would it be a civil war with a struggle between? these rednecks and Jews. The Jews were never in that kind of relationship with the United States where civil war was on the table. Now, the civil war was something be be between uh, 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 different factions of the white community who aligned themselves or aligned themselves against or for the factions in the African-American community. And the African community obviously was aligned for itself to, 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 to end enslavement of itself. Yeah. Right? So... What we're seeing is those people that were that have always been in the game of we're superior, we're the best, we're the top. You have to be the bottom. You have to be what we say you should be. You have to be obedient, be dogs, or be dead. That's that's the struggle that we have going on right now. Right. And we need to get hip to this. Yeah. Now I realize, you know, that rapper coon, somebody, you know, made. <laughs> Made made four dollars, you know, selling, yeah. you know, it was uh, a young girl, by the know, way, whatever they are, selling, selling, you know, the, the the n word, and I get so irritated with that. I get so irritated with that. If a white woman or a white man were to call a black person the n word, you got, you know, all kind of legal stuff coming on. The NAACP, right. you know, World Congress, the, the the United Nations gets involved, you know, horrible thing, right? But you have African people calling each other this name, not just to each other, talking to each other. They say it on the radio. They say it on TV. You got people making movies out of people talking like that, you know, uh, uh, about each other. We've got to learn better. That's not my point today, but, it's, it, but is, it is a point.
it's, we yeah, have to learn better. It's right? a valid point, Mr. Hare, and it's a point that even myself, I have to work with that. You know what I mean? I, 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 I just it, refuse. I refuse to let that word come out of I, my mouth. Yeah. Okay? I, like I say, in certain circles, I let it go, and I try, and my wife has tried to, I mean, different people all come at me and, t- you know, try to help me with that. It is definitely something that I have to. So you should accept it when Norm slaps you on the back of the head. When, when you say that, don't, don't get mad at him. Say thank you. Well, Sla- well slap me again. Well, Norm, 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 Norm put it in the perfect perspective to me. He had ability. He was with Trump and some other millionaires, um, sports figures. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was able to. Because Norm rolls like that. Right. <laughs> he, he, in that position, this shows you who Trump really is. In that position, Norm was able to make maybe hundreds of dollars Mm -hmm. in that moment. Trump saw that and said, no, I got it, and gave him, how much he gave you, Norm? $20. $20. He was able to make, ability to make hundreds of dollars. Trump said, no, I got it, because that nigga ain't worth it. Hey, see, there, see, there you go. There well, you go. Uh, no, but that's what go. it is. Slap him, Norm. That's what it's about. Slap him on the back of the head right now. Let his head hit the computer. <sighs> that's what it's about. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wow. Yeah, but what, you what know we... we're going to get a, uh, <laughs> a, a, a one of those notices from the uh, yeah, from, yeah. from the FCC on that. Did, right? I, did I say that? Did that yeah, yeah, yeah. You need help. You need oh, help. Oh. FCC, remember, this was not me <laughs> saying that, okay? <laughs> I did not say this, and I hey, did check him. Okay? I said Negro, right? Negro. So, no, 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 you didn't say that. I didn't say Negro? It, it, that's not a good word either, but but oh, that's okay. another story. Well, okay. but, but where we are, though, right now, we it, it seems as if they are fighting tooth and nail to keep um, themselves in that one per- They They already see that we've gotten there. You know, and right now they do not want us to take a, another step forward. I, I right. just want us to understand that we are being manipulated. Mm-hmm. And right. we almost volunteer to be manipulated. You know, I mean, s- sometimes you have to own the reality that other people are imposing on you. You have to own how you feel about it and what you're going to do to respond to it. You can't just whine about stuff. You can't just accept stuff. You got to create a standard that you're going to pursue, and then you got to do everything you can to reach that standard. Where does it start, Mr. Hare? Doesn't it? Doesn't it start? It start with I know, voting. I right, mean, right, I, I mean, it right. starts because it's, that's where we change things. At. Right, right. So what we have to do is to get those of us who see, to show those of us who are blind, what it is that they are not seeing. So also in the homes, because this right. is another thing. Uh, just like he's speaking of, the, if if you have children that are looking at things, they just don't know. They don't know. Their, their mindset is not fixed to understand so let me show what's you, really going on. Let me show you the shallowness of how this stuff runs. Mm-hmm. It is a fact that the Democrats as a party, uh, as a group in the House of Representatives, voted against Kevin McCarthy. Okay, yeah. But let's look at this pr- process-wise. Mm-hmm. In the history of the country, when they created the House of Representatives in the first place, the Speaker of the House is elected by the people who are members of the House of Representatives, right? So whichever party has the majority of the votes, they elect the person that that party wants to have in that seat. You don't elect a person from the other party. You elect a person from your body. The way you control uh, uh, that process is you have to work hard to get the majority of the Congress people to be in your party. That way your party has the votes. That's how this has always been done. Kevin McCarthy lost favor with the Republicans. Remember when they created him, they uh, voted for him to be speaker in the first place? It took 15 rounds of voting. But they knew he was a paper tiger, though. They knew he was. They made him a paper tiger. Yeah, yeah. Matt Gates, uh, Gates, and all of those people, they said, well, we'll give you our vote, but I need one of your knees, I need two of your kidneys. You know, uh, can I get that valve over there with the A order? Give me the A order, too. Uh, you know, a, a, and so on. They, they just took everything out of Kevin McCarthy as the price for him to become speaker. If Kevin McCarthy was a truly honorable, principled person, he would have told them, your price is too high. I'm not spending that much for the speakership. Remember, he gets paid $175,000 a year just to be a congressperson. He may get another $20,000 a year to be the Speaker of the House, 
But he's just going to go back to his regular job. It's not like he's going to be unemployed. Go ahead. I, I just got to – I need to ask it because I, I, I kind of want this to get out there. I don't know if you are leading this direction. The reason I called you the other day, do you remember? Mm-hmm. Can you please let the people know what, the, what, what they're trying to do as far as getting Trump – to become speaker, so which, that, which kind of threw me off. That's, on, that's me. on the table right now. So now that they decided to just just disembowel Kevin McCarthy and then throw his, you know, uh, carcass, you know, out on uh, on the road as roadkill, not only have they done that, they can't settle amongst themselves who should be the Speaker of the House. There's nobody among the Republicans so far, even the guy that they uh, uh, elected as the Temporary person, what they call the speaker pro temporary, pro temporary, yeah, right. That temporary person, even he, Patrick Henry, even he uh, does not have enough support to be able to to, to win the, uh, uh, the 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 vote of the Republicans in the House. So because they they, they can't do that, they, they're looking outside of the House of Representatives. The rules, the, the way that the House of Representatives was set up in our Constitution, you don't have to be a member of the House of uh, 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 the, the House of Representatives, you didn't have to be a member of that House to be the Speaker of the House. You could be anybody. You could be a dog catcher. You could be an unemployed person. You could be a flower shop owner. It wouldn't matter. You could be anything and be the Speaker of the House. So what are the Republicans doing to create a different scenario, to get you focused on something that doesn't make you focus on the the the, the incompetence and the uh, unprincipledness that rules the Republican Party right now. So they, they go to it and they say, well, we'll put Donald Trump out there. And then he'll be the lightning rod, all the ugly attention, the bad you know, attention for the, all the ugly stuff that we do. It'll all wind up going on him. And he won't care because he likes the attention anyway. And he's not losing anything. You yeah. know, if he's Speaker of the House... He's not. He's not anything right now. So he becomes Speaker of the House. He gains. He's, he's back in the political process. There you go. Yeah, I mean, right? it's, it's See, man. So that's the scam that's going on right now. But most folks didn't know that you didn't have to be a member of the House of Representatives to be the Speaker of the House. Yeah. So they could really elect anybody, you know, to that to that position. Now that means the Democrats would have to stand 100 percent against whoever that is that the Republicans try to put forward. But the Republicans have a four vote majority. So if you are not able to get at least four uh, or five of the Republicans to say, no, we don't want a knucklehead, you know, to be the Speaker of the House. We don't want to be manipulated that way. We're not going to vote for this person. If you go along to get along, you're going to end up with this situation. Now, the reason why this is so important in, in my analysis of this is it demonstrates that the issue is not just these eight sort of radical, you know, cowboy, you know, uh, redneck, whatever yeah. they are, you know, type of Republicans. That's not the issue. They, they are an issue. There's no question yeah. about that. But that's not the issue. It's deeper. The issue is that the Republican Party as a whole, the, the majority of people in the Republican Party as a whole, either like what Donald Trump and Gates and Bobberts and Comer and, and, and all these people, what they're doing, they either like it or they're just okay with it because it's not happening to them. But whether they like it or not, all the Republicans are going to stand together. And that's 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 a terrible that's, issue in itself. That's the point. So yeah. we, we have to stop letting people convince us, these media people, to try to keep focusing on Lauren Bobbert, you know, the, the girly girl, you know, at the— at the movies and whatnot, you know, where she's tickling this guy's, you know, parts and he's tickling her parts in front of everybody in the movie. I mean, and she's a congresswoman. I mean, how do you keep your job when you do stuff like that? Why why don't people come together and vote and say, you know, it's so it's legal for you to do what you're doing, but you can't do that representing us. Right. Go home. Right. Mr. Mr. Here, let me just let me just ask. This is uh, just going on to another. How likely, how likely is it that with the way that things are and with the, the, the majority uh, in the House, mm-hmm. that Trump may gain office. Is there a percentage that you can give us? And I, I mean, as far as... I, I just, would say I the odds wondering. right now are almost 50-50 that Trump could wind up being elected president again. And how... Remember I, I that... I was just talking about to 
I was just talking about the uh, remember being this. speaker of the house. Remember this 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 theorem. If you go back and you study the previous election since 1964, mm -hmm. you will find that the majority of white Americans as a whole have voted for the Republican candidate in every single presidential election since Goldwater. Every single one. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean that every 50% uh, or, or more or, or of the uh, uh, white Americans are racist? Doesn't mean that. It means that 50% of the white Americans in this country are okay with right. the policies right. that right. are being articulated by those people who also seem to be comfortable with the racist being in their group. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. If you get comfortable with people in your group, then they begin to infect you with whatever it is that's inside of them, and it puts you on a glide path where you start moving away from a, uh, a, 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 a majoritarian uh, uh, democracy. You start moving away from that to a democracy of the, the, the few governing all of the many. That's the situation that we are facing right now. I hear the music, you know. Now, you know, Willie took a long time having the emergency and whatnot. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't say it's. Uh, I, I get extra minutes, you know, for that. Didn't say that. No, he just said we'll, we'll give you extra minutes on the back end. Oh, see how they do you? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, listen. Why don't we do this? Let's take care of our sponsors. We don't want them to go away. So let's take care of our sponsors. We'll see you on the other side of the break here at Living for the People at ninety-one point three FM WBNY. <laughs> WBNY is proud to present Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman. Welcome to Democracy Now! Award-winning investigative journalism. Is the NRA imploding? Providing relevant analysis that makes you think. Secret State Department documents, including evidence of U.S. war crimes. Fact-finding reports you will not hear elsewhere. Democracy Now! airs Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. on 91.3 FM, WBNY, Buffalo. Ready for radio that's challenging, innovative, and encouraging? Tune in. Living for the people. This is L. Nathan Hare. Join me right here, 91.3 FM WBNY. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 a.m. after Amy Goodman's Democracy Now! We'll provide objective analysis regarding current issues. Call 878-5104. It's Living for the People on 91.3 FM WBNY. Welcome back to Living for the People. This is L. Nathan here. Uh, again, welcome to our broadcast. We're here with in studio uh, our, our number one citizen in studio audience of one, uh, Norm MacArthur. How you doing, Norm? Pretty good, Mr. Hare. Thank and, you. Sir. And of course, Willie H. is back. He didn't take. He didn't have an emergency this time. He was right there, <laughs> right there for us. Welcome back, Will. Welcome, everybody, to Living for the People with L. Nathan Hare. So I, I just want to make this, this, this point. You know, w when you listen to the media, remember, why would the Democrats vote for a Republican to be the leader of the, speak, uh, uh, of the House of Representatives? If, they had the, if the Democrats had the majority in the House, they wouldn't have in entertained Kevin McCarthy being the Speaker of the House. He's a Republican. Right. They would have voted for somebody from their own ranks. Right. That's what the Republicans have been doing, voting for somebody from their own ranks. Mm -hmm. Now, when the Republicans turned on the speaker as a group, they turned on the speaker, not all of them, really just eight Republicans turned against McCarthy. But because that eight represented enough votes that you couldn't get a majority of the uh, 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 Republicans to vote for uh, for Kevin McCarthy, you could you or, majority in the House to vote for Kevin McCarthy because mm -hmm. that occurred. Kevin McCarthy didn't have a leg to stand on. He was he, he, he was uh, uh, without uh, sufficient support. But why would the Democrats come and rescue Kevin McCarthy? Let me tell you about Kevin McCarthy. When the Democrats were facing were facing the issue back in May and, and Ju June and July, the, the debt ceiling crisis, okay. right, that crisis was caused by the Republicans, not by the Democrats. 
the Republicans decided they were going to hold the country hostage and say, we won't allow you to increase the spending level uh, or the borrowing levels of the United States unless you give us 10, 20, 30 percent cuts in everything except defense and tax cuts for me and my, and, and my cousins. <laughs> that was the price they wanted to charge. Yeah. The Democrats actually worked together with McCarthy. They came up with a framework with the, with the president, mostly with the president of the United States, Joe Biden, mm -hmm. came up with a framework that everybody could, could stand. Not that everybody, nobody liked it. You know, the Republicans didn't like it from their perspective. The Democrats didn't like it from their perspective. But it was a middle ground position. Happy medium. And not happy, but just a medium. medium. Right? <laughs> and, and, and they accepted yeah. that, right? Yes, sir. But that was done with Democratic votes, not with Republican votes. And it got done. McCarthy then blamed the Democrats for the debt ceiling crisis. So you come to me and ask me for my help. I work with you through my own party's president and get you the help that you need to be able to solve the crisis. Then you blame me for the crisis that you created. Yeah. Then when we get to this, which we, I told you was going to occur, that because they had not developed a budget, uh, resu uh, continuing resolutions for the 12 uh, departments of, of the federal government, because they hadn't done that, that was going to become another choke point. Yeah. And we reached that point, you know, coming to the middle of, of September. If it wasn't done by the end of September, <laughs> September 30th, government would have shut down. Who rescued the, gov the, 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 uh, 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 the government from that shutdown? It was the Democrats who worked together with McCarthy to come up with a framework on how to keep the government open for 45 days. That's not even a good deal, you know, mm -hmm. keeping the government open until November 17th. And then they're going to have the same crisis all over again. On that day, yeah. But the Democrats work with McCarthy to get that agreement to keep government moving uh, without any change in government to get that uh, to, to get that moving. When the uh, 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 Democrats put all of their votes behind the deal, so it looked like it was almost unanimous. You know, the the deal that was struck to end the uh, the, the shutdown crisis. McCarthy turned around and acted like he deserved credit for it. You know, this is what I, Kevin McCarthy, did, and these Democrats. It's their fault. They're the reason why this shutdown was, was in front of us in the first place. Mr. Hare, when it really boils down to it, and this is just my own personal take, um, I'm looking at it like this is just an effort on the, on the uh, part of the Republicans just to make President Biden look bad. They want to keep him in a position where he's off balance, and they don't want him to ever feel comfortable in, in, in what he's doing. So... And, keep, and at the same time, keeping the country held right. hostage. It, it, it is that. That's the, that's that's the overriding underlying. And thing. just before the right. election, right? So, so, th yeah. so that that's definitely true. But I think what is also true is that this is incubating something amongst the Republican Party base that they're becoming more and more comfortable as a group to get behind extremely austere, you know, radical, mm -hmm. compromising kinds of initiatives. Yeah. So here was the price that the Republicans as a whole, the Republican Party as a whole, was going to hold uh, uh, the Democrats to in order to get a, a, a deal to end the, the, uh, uh, the government shutdown. The price was raising the amount of money going to the Department of Defense by 11 percent, Lowering taxes raising by raising money for the for the, for the for defense DOD? department for the defense <laughs> okay by All 11 right. percent lowering the tax rate by four or five percent and lowering the amount of money that goes into the the average money that goes into each of those twelve departments of government that are not the Department of Defense okay Lo yeah. lowering their their budget by thirty percent what now, are those departments called. These are the various departments of government. So you got Health and Human Services. You got the Department of Labor. You know, you 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 got the. Uh, well, these are the appropriations, right? Right, right. The, okay. These yeah. are the twelve appropriations bills. Okay. Right. Yeah. They make up the budget for the uh, federal government, and so all of those budgets were going to be reduced by thirty percent. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we we 
compromising child care in the country, compromising yeah. education in this country, compromising housing in this country, you know, co- compromising health and human services, yeah. you know, uh, 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 the Medi- Medicare administration, Social Security was also on the table, yeah. you know, on this. And, and you know, if they didn't take 30 percent from Social Security, but they were going to take that that money stream from everything else. Yeah. That meant that everything that uh, uh, that Social Security didn't pay through reductions would have to come at the price of lowering the budgets of other par- departments of government. Mr. Let me mm-hmm. just make a, a, a small analysis. But when it comes down with these 12 appropriations, every single one of these affects the little people. Right. Or the, yeah, other, the people that aren't rich. So, yeah. Right. You know, the, the rest of us, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So it's important that we understand that the Democrats can't be blamed for the shutdown crisis because the Republicans had control of the House. You can't get a budget bill out of the House unless the Republicans agree to it. So the Democrats can do what they had been doing. They offer bills up and the Republicans throw them on the table, throw them on, on, on the floor or throw them in the garbage can. Mm. Right. Uh, the the, the, the uh, uh, senators, the Democratic senators offer up budget bills, send them over to the House. They throw those things in the garbage can. Then they come out and tell the public that the Dem- the, the, the the Senate Democrats haven't passed any budget resolutions. Well, that's a speciously stupid statement. The, the, the Senate Democrats don't have the authority to pass a budget resolution. All they can do is put forward their ideas, put them into a package form, send them to the House of Representatives. The House of Represent- Representatives has to consider the ideas, mm-hmm. which they refuse to do. They wouldn't even debate the ideas. They just threw the things, you know, to, to the side yeah. and came up with their own, you know, civil war against, you know, humanity and so on, you know, in, in, in their budget. Right. So it, it's important to um, to understand that, that that context. But let me move on to a few other things. Uh, the GOP infighting. Um, when I don't even know if I want to go through that part again either. Um So uh, the issue that you talked about on Trump, let me just give you a little bit of depth on that. This is an article written by Gabriella uh, Fer- Ferragini. She, re- she refers to it as the grotesque violation. Critics pour cold water on Marjorie Taylor Greene's push to elect Donald Trump as new House uh, uh, Speaker. She called it a grotesque violation. <laughs> Oh, well, it is. I, I, I'm loving this lady. I, yeah. I never heard of her before, right? Yeah. But but she's got the byline for this story. Mm-hmm. And what she talks about is that several far-right Republicans say that they're backing former President Donald Trump to be the next Speaker of the House, following the right-wing coup that dou- uh, ousted Kevin McCarthy. Largely orchestrated by Matt, Dates, Matt Gates, mm-hmm. a group of eight House Republicans led the charge in booting McCarthy from the spe- speakership after he sought Democratic support for the passage of a stopgap spending bill to avoid a government shutdown over the weekend. Now, I don't want you all to think that Kevin McCarthy is the hero in this or the martyr in this. Hmm. Kevin McCarthy was working with the Republicans. They were pushing these aggressive bills to reduce uh, uh, the the, the size of of, uh, the budgets of all of these departments of government except the Department of Defense. And to reduce taxes. They've been reducing taxes since, I've been telling you, since the Reagan administration. Every time they do this reduction in taxes, they limit the amount of revenue that comes into the federal government, but they keep increasing the amount of expenditures. They're going to war against people, killing people, bombing people, you know, failing to build houses. You know, I mean, they're just doing all kind of stuff. And the, 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 the price is, if you keep lowering revenues, as you increase expenses, you have this burgeoning deficit that, that occurs. Then when something really bad happens, like the housing crisis that occurred in 2007 uh, under the George Bush, the second George Bush administration, that was what uh, uh, the wave that brought Barack Obama, Barack Obama to power in this country. He then had to deal with the recession that was caused by the bad policies of the Bush administration. It took until the... Uh, spring of 2010 to get the economy 
uh, back up to snuff where it was growing jobs uh, uh, faster than it was losing jobs. And, of course, you saw what occurred. From that point, I think it was in March of 2010, from that point on, 78 straight months, you had an average of 220 or so thousand jobs uh, every month for that entire time period. It pulled the country out of that recession. Naturally, the American media and the Republican, you know, aligned folks, uh, they all say, well, yeah, he got us out of the recession, but he got us out slower than, you know, we expected. Well, you, you didn't go into it, you know, you, you, you went into this, this recession quickly, right, mm -hmm. doing what you were doing, and it took a while to get you out of uh, uh, this recession. Instead of being glad that things got better, and unemployment went way, way down and, you know, the economy reconstructed uh, uh, itself. You sit here and, 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 and uh, I don't know what the right word is. I want to say, say polite words. You know, you, 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 you basically disrespected the effort and the success of the Obama administration in getting you out of that recession. Now you get the pandemic shows up. Trump had things going on, right? Uh, he, he inherited the economy that was growing, that, you know, was robust. You had savings. You had investments going on in the economy. Uh, it was everything you wanted in the economy, and the economy continued to grow when Trump came into office. But then something bad happened. A virus that had been sneaking around the world for a long time, couldn't find any place, you know, to incubate. Somebody in Wuhan, China, mm -hmm. you know, did something that, you know, they probably got the virus into some animal and then released the animal out into the, the wild. The animal started biting other animals. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, this thing got into the chain, probably through the food. This, this virus got into the, 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 the food chain. And then we ended up with this pandemic, you know, like just violently, you know, attacking the entire world. We lost a million people in America, yeah. you know, to that, to that virus, right? And President Trump quickly tried to distance himself from that. Tried to act like, well, yeah. it was my fault, even though he was the one who said initially, I mean, there's no problem yeah. here. Yeah. There's only 15 cases in the entire country. Mm. Only one person has died. You know, by next week, you know, this will be a, a memory. You know, it, 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 it'll go away. And he said these words. I'm not making it, it up. No, yeah. He said, it'll go away like magic. Mm. That's what he said. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it didn't go away like magic. It turned into a nightmare. Right? And but you know you haven't heard the Republicans ever give any accountability. Never for took Donald ownership. Trump. Never took ownership not of once. what it was. No, not once. Not at all. And then he took credit for the vaccine. <laughs> now I give him credit. You know, <laughs> you put money where you think money is going to produce outcomes, right? Right. So he goes to the private play players. You know, Moderna, yeah. Pfizer. You know, the big pharma. You know, pharmaceuticals say, I know you guys are going to be spending money to try to find a virus, mm -hmm. uh, a vaccine for the virus anyway. Yeah. Let me throw a little bit of money on the table to help you all out. He only did what he had to do, Mr. So, Hare. So he puts $12 billion on the table. Yeah. But you know what? If he hadn't put that $12 billion on the table, the pharmaceutical companies would have spent that money anyway. Yeah. Because selling drugs is what they do. They're drug salespeople. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big drug dealer. Come on now. Let's, let's be honest, <laughs> big, right? The biggest drug Big pharma, pharma big is pharma. the biggest drug dealers <laughs> biggest on drug. earth. earth. <laughs> and if they can't get you to buy the drugs they're selling right now, they'll invent a drug to addict you to. I, Mr. Hay, I remember in 1980, I, we did a contract with a pharmaceutical. They make money. They make Listen, tons of money. How much money do you, see, you, you, you have you seen go into curing uh, uh, cancer or heart disease? Not a nickel. They don't. They don't put anything into how, it because they don't want it to be. They don't right. want it to happen. How much money have you seen them put up to be able to treat the the the, the symptoms of cancer and heart disease? Nothing. Well, they put billions up to treat the symptoms, right? Oh, okay. But they yeah, won't give yeah. you a dime to cure it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no no that that cure uh, that that doesn't work mm -mm, yeah. don't get away from that that that's mm -hmm. poison yeah now I don't know whether these things that people say are are cures are cures or not I don't know I'm not a doctor right right my point is that we started chasing this cancer this heart disease thing in the 1950s right they promised we were gonna we were gonna solve this crisis then fifty to seventy years have gone by since they began that struggle. And we are no further along on heart disease than we were before. Rather, rather there's a cure or not, 
they're, they're never going to totally go all in on it because it makes big pharma too much money. So I'm just helping us to understand this stuff, you know, that Marjorie Taylor Greene and Troy Nels and Greg Stube and uh, other folks, they, they were the ones that championed, uh, and Matt Gates and these people championed the, 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 the motion to replace McCarthy. Now, they couldn't find anybody else. This is what's so stupid about this thing. And, and it, the public needs to be judging these people. Well, I don't, I don't want to say judging because there's only one judge that I know of in existence. Right. And that's the one God. Yes, sir. So I'm not going to pretend like I or anybody else has the right to judge anybody. Right. But I do have a right to determine whether or not I, sh- I, sh- I should go left or right when I got two paths in front of me. Yes. The path that says that we should remove Kevin McCarthy from the speakership that's one path, and the path that says let's leave McCarthy in place because he's the devil that we know as opposed to the devil that we don't know. Let me keep the devil that I know because every time I find myself in the hands of the devil that I don't know, things get worse. Right. right. So let me just go with the devil that I know. At, at least things won't get worse. Right. But the Republican Party didn't go that way. They said, nah, let's, let's try the other devil. And then people said, well, what's the other devil's name? I don't know. What about Patrick Henry? You made him, you know, the temporary speaker. Now we don't want him. We just put him up there because we did. We needed somebody to put there. He's temporary, right? He, you know, he's, <laughs> he's he's a placeholder, right? And so, I mean, that's that's the craziness that we're in. Uh, conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, who was convicted, in fact, not only was it was he convicted of uh, libel, you know, and, and causing tremendous harm to people's reputation. Remember, he, he, he pretended that in the uh, uh, school shooting that it was actors, you know, that were involved in uh, uh, making it look like there was a school shooting when it really wasn't, mm-hmm. that it was it was a scam. I mean, stuff like that, you know, that uh, the, the Parkland, you know, a uh, 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 school shooting and so on. This is the stuff that uh, uh, Alex Jones does. Uh, disgraced person, Steve Bannon, another disgraced uh, person convicted of uh, contempt of uh, of of uh, 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 the the court, uh, Newsmax. You know another one of these conservative you know uh, uh, news outlets. They've been floating the notion that Trump should be uh, elected as a Speaker of the House. Now you see how this guy has behaved during the course of this trial, calling people you know witches and. You know, these people are drug dealers, they're, they're murderers, they're traitors, they're this and that. You know, this is what Trump has been doing all during the course of the trial. Even when he's been told, if you do this, we're going to sanction you, maybe even put you in a, uh, a, 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 a U.S. Marshal's uh, a jail, you know, until, you, until the, 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 your, your trial is adjudicated because you won't stop trying to, to taint the jury pool uh, in, in the areas where— uh, these trials are taking place. So the Daily Beast was talking about this article. Fox News uh, host Sean Hannity, who is a close confidant of the president, indicated that he had communicated with a number of GOP lawmakers who were planning to make the move to nominate Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump said, I've been told that, Tr- uh, uh, I'm sorry, Donald didn't say this. This is something Sean Hannity said. I've been told that Trump might be open to helping the Republican Party, at least in the short term, if necessary. Trump is going to help the Republican Party? How is Trump going to help the Republican Party? Critics pulled cold uh, cold water on the idea. Sherilyn Eitfill, who used to be the president of the NAACP's Legal Defense Fund, she warned that electing Trump's speaker would accelerate the 14th Amendment section showdown because Trump returning to the House the literal scene of the insurrection to try and serve as speaker might be an even more grotesque Section 3 violation than trying to be president. Uh, uh, Now, now, I don't know if you all knew this, but there is actually a rule that governs the House of Representatives. Now, it's not a law, but you you have bylaws, you know, so the the Senate has bylaws that govern how you're supposed to act. Uh, the, the House of Representatives has bylaws that governs how you're supposed to act and so on. They're not laws, but they are written agreements that this is what you have to do when you hold these positions. In their agreements, it says that you are that if a leader is indicted for a felony for which the, the uh, potential 
uh, um, uh, uh, sentence would be a year or two in prison. If you are indicted, not, not convicted, if you are indicted for a felony that would, if you were convicted, would have given, given you one to two years in jail, you cannot serve as a Speaker of the House. Mm. Now, I, I don't even understand that rule, right? <laughs> Well, you, that's 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 the rule you came up with. You didn't just come up with a rule that says that nobody who is uh, 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 under indictment for a felony, uh, uh, a felony crime can be serving in the House of Representatives, period. Yeah, that, that should have been the end of it. But it still covers President Trump that, but, that, he, yeah. that he can't. Be. You could have the narrowest, you know, uh, 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 a rule possible. It would still cover Donald Trump. <laughs> Because everything he does is is just horrible. <laughs> quickly, quickly, many Americans simply don't file tax returns. I don't know if this is norm, Willie. Uh-oh. You know, I don't know if this is norm, right? Juliana Kaplan wrote this article. Uh, it says some of America's richest people are not just are, are not are, are just not paying their taxes. Millionaires alone, this is in Business Insider. This is not a conservative, I mean, a, a liberal. This is a conservative magazine, Business Insider. They said that the, the millionaires alone, if they just paid their taxes, just the millionaires, that would put $34 billion back into the federal budget mm. if they just paid their taxes. Now, the new IRS data shows that some of America's highest uh, income earners are not paying taxes. Nearly a thousand taxpayers who make over a million dollars a year in annual earnings are not paying taxes at all, are not even bothering to file tax returns. They just say, you know, what you going to do about it? I'm a millionaire. What you going to do? The average taxpayer pays something like $16,615 a year in taxes annually. The IRS data released in, uh, uh, by Ron Wyden of Oregon shows that over 10,000 high earners making at least 200000 a year owed at least 100000 in unfiled taxes, mm. right, that go back to 2017. Nearly 1,000 taxpayers who make over a million dollars a year didn't file taxes at all for multiple years between 2015 and 2020. Just, just blew it off, right? Uh, th- those taxpayers owe over a thir- over $34 billion in back taxes. Uh, this is my minute for the, the minute you owe me from. Yeah. The, the <laughs> program. Not a problem. Not a problem. Go get it, Mr. Hare. <laughs> yeah. Not a problem. And, and out of this, this high inner, uh, earner non-filer group, 58 of these people earned at least $10 million a year. 58 people earned $10 million a year and didn't pay any taxes at all, they owe 16.5, this is 58 people, Wow. owe $16.5 billion in back taxes just for the period between 2015 and 2020. Is that counting the tax money on top of the taxes? This, I mean, I, I don't know how much they count on this <laughs> stuff, right? I'm just telling you that the reason why we are going out of the world backwards is because the people that are the rulers, especially yeah. the ones in the Republican Party, who keep fighting. Remember, the Republican, Republican Party for the past 20 years mm-hmm. has been fighting the budget of the Internal Revenue Service. Yeah. Until Biden came into office for 10 years in a row, the budget of the Internal Revenue Service has either been kept steady or has been reduced every year over the course of that time period. They did that because they claimed that the Internal Revenue Service was in opposition to citizens. It was taking more money from citizens than it should be. Mm. That's just not true. Yeah. What it really was doing was administering the tax collection system, yeah. answering whatever questions you had, getting you whatever services that you need, and investigating the people who had not been paying their taxes. That's the real issue. Yeah. And because those people tend to be Republicans... They're the ones that are objecting to the Internal Revenue Service actually doing its job, yeah. collecting the taxes from the people that they owe taxes. They don't want them to do it at all. Uh-uh. This is as ugly as it gets, right? The IRS and economists found in 2021 that the top 1% of earners in this country don't report nearly a quarter of their income. Not only do they not pay taxes, when they report their income, they only report about 75% of they it. They lie yeah. about it, yeah. They just lie, right. That's how Trump got away with it all these years. Yep. 
So it's really important for our people to understand this is what's really going on. Now, you may object to, well, why are they giving money to support some people who aren't working? Why aren't they, why are they giving money to put a medical clinic in an area where there's low-income people that don't pay their medical bills, you know, and, and so on? Well, those may be issues, but those are minor issues. Mm. The big issues are the ones that are costing you two, three, four, five, six, eight hundred, maybe even a trillion dollars a year of revenue mm. that should be coming into the government to pay for the government's operations that are not coming in because people are cheating and cheating and cheating and cheating, corporations and individuals. That's what we really got to get our arms around. If we don't do something about this, this whole thing is going to come apart. The other thing about this is that the people that are defending these Republicans are people that are doing everything in their power to ensure that they win office. That means they cheat in local elections. They gerrymander election districts. They, they uh, uh, kick out people that are fair and, and employ people in the elections offices that are willing to do whatever these Republicans want to get done, like giving people access to the voting machines. Wow. Whoever thought that they would anybody would ever give the physical voting machines that were used in an election to some private player to go in and, and do a forensic analysis on the, <laughs> on the machines and uh, so on, right? Mm. And, and then fought, fought to not give the machines back. Then the machines had to be destroyed because they couldn't use, be used in a, in a future uh, election because the machines were compromised. We've got to get our arms around this thing. We've got to get our heads around this thing. We have real threats to the integrity of the American society. The, the woman who's you know, got four kids and you think she, only have, she, she, she should only have two, that may be an issue for you, but that's a minor issue. The bigger issue is that you got economic crises that are killing us. We are now over $33 trillion in debt. We're not going to solve this problem by chasing that lady who's getting, you know, 60 extra dollars a month, you know, in public assistance. That's not going to solve our problem. We have to get to people who are not paying their taxes to pay their taxes. We need to put, turn the tax rates back up to where they were, and we need to uh, 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 then use innovation to reduce the amount of cost that it takes to operate our government. I've gone as far as I can go. I probably took two more minutes than I should have taken. Thank you all for listening, listening to us and supporting us. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I'm not sure why we have to be playing football in in England, but if that's but that means you got to get up at 9:30. Well, you, yeah. <laughs> you got your your Buffalonians they're going to England. They, they're, they're going. Exactly. Right. I know some people is going to just miss the game cuz they don't Listen, they call it the Bills yeah. Mafia, right? They yeah. they're, they're going in numbers, they, they, right? Yeah, they're going. Okay. They're going. Yeah. So, let's hope that it it's worth the while. All the expense is worth it. Hey. And Buffalo comes back with a victory. Willie and I were at breakfast the other day. We had a whole table getting prepared to go to the Matter, to wow. England. Matter of fact, I do Uber too and and they also <laughs> Um, there was people going to the airport last week. Tell, to tell, be in tell the people who pay for this hour of the program, we owe them $8, okay? <laughs> all right. Okay. We'll see you all on Monday here at Living for the People at 91.3 FM, WBNY.